Today's guest is Dr. Sonia Chopra. She is a healer and a tooth saver. So she's a board certified endodontist, a TEDx speaker, Forbes contributor, author, endodontic instructor, impact entrepreneur, and founder of the Ballantine Endodontics in Charlotte, North Carolina. Dr. Chopra became passionate about endodontics after a dental patient experience in her youth where her pain was misdiagnosed and the wrong tooth was extracted, uh, led her to on this whole career path. So she shares a little bit of that quickly, but then she's getting right. This episode is straight to the point. Super appreciate her on this. Um, if you can watch this on YouTube, cause she's going to show some dental x-rays to demonstrate what she's talking about. But if you're listening on audio and you don't feel like switching it, she is going to explain verbally what she's saying there, but you might want to check it out. But basically what we're, she's talking about today is that why you might want to consider having a root canal and clear, clearing up some of the misconceptions about root canals. Um, I know nothing about this topic. So this was like super, you'll see as the nature of my questions go, I'm like, what? I don't know anything about this. Keep talking, you know, but she's essentially in a nutshell explaining how getting a root canal can just get infection out of the way. So your body can heal and regenerate itself and how you can have bone loss and all these unnecessary complications without getting root canal. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate her just getting into the nitty gritty of why this matters. Um, she's doing root canals all day, every day. And yeah, she's got a message on it that she wants to share because she feels like a lot of people are misinformed. And she also gives you really practical tips on what to look for in an endodontist or even with your regular dentist, if they're going to do a root canal on you, some questions you might want to ask and some awarenesses you might want to have. So anyway, I just thought this was like very enlightening information that I would have never known otherwise. So I hope you guys enjoy as well. We will go ahead and dive in. Here is Dr. Sonia Chopra. Okay. So Dr. Chopra, I'm so glad that you could come talk to us about something that I would bet a lot of my audience doesn't know much about. I don't know anything about fully admit, and that's root canals. And, you know, you hear this kind of like, uh Oh, good, bad thinking, right? Like, are those good? Or are those bad? Like, what is it? There's a lot of confusion. Like, I mean, obviously people think it's bad because they don't want to get a root canal, but I'm talking more in like the health world. Like there's some confusion there, you know, mm -hmm. and you had an experience in your own life with mm -hmm. a root canal that yeah. brought you to even be doing this as a doctor mm -hmm. now. So can you share um, that experience and yeah. then give us the, the DL on root canals. What's the deal? <laughs> yeah. So I basically got into this business, um, from an experience I had when I was 17 years old, I had just graduated high school and I was actually born without some of my teeth. Some, I had some congenitally missing teeth. So I was, I feel like always at the dentist as a child and after I started to get some of my teeth fixed, my mom was really adamant on making sure I went to college with a full set. <laughs> and so I had to get some teeth replacement. And right after that happened, I started developing some pain that I really couldn't pinpoint. And it became a big diagnostic issue for my dentist. And then I kind of went on this wild goose chase to figure out what was going on with me. Pretty much nine months in, nobody could figure out what was happening to me, where I was having, wh what my source of pain was. My general dentist referred me to like six different doctors, different dentists and medical doctors. They thought I had like this trigeminal neuralgia and I didn't have any of that. All I had was a toothache that was like started out as a very vague pain, kind of a mild pain. And then over the months, it just escalated into this severe infection and abscess where I actually swelled up. I spiked a fever because my body was trying to fight it for so long. Um, I actually was referred to an oral surgeon because nobody knew what to do with me. And the oral surgeon was instructed to extract my tooth. They took my tooth out and then I still had the same toothache. And so mm -hmm. after that episode, then I was referred to an endodontist who I had no idea what an endodontist was. And that's a root canal specialist. And I was referred to the root canal specialist. They performed a root canal, got me out of pain, made me feel normal again, made me learn to trust my body again. For a while, I was not trusting wow. my body. A lot of people were telling me there was nothing wrong. And then this root canal got me out of pain, saved my tooth. And that was kind of the day I realized, wow, I think this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. So lo and behold, I went to dental school 
did my four years. And after my four years of dental school, I tried general dentistry for a while, but then I realized I wasn't loving it as much. And so I was like, I think I really need to specialize. And I think doing root canals is going to be my jam. So I went back, I did a, a residency and became a root canal specialist, AKA endodontist. And I have been in private practice for now 16 years. And I see that there's just so much fear around getting a root canal. Is a root canal safe? A lot mm -hmm. of people think it's toxic. There's a little bit of controversy about it. Mm -hmm. And I am really want to just share that it doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be painful. And it could be healing, restorative, and regenerative. Mm. Okay. Healing, restorative, and regenerative. So let's go deeper into that. How is it? How, you know, can you give us a little more nitty gritty, I guess, you know, let's hit on like, why do some people, why is it yeah. controversial? What is the controversy? Controversy. <laughs> well, a lot of people think that root canals are toxic and there are, what I want to say to that is that there are many root canals that are not done to like premium clinical standards, unfortunately. Mm. Okay? And that has created this, this belief that root canals are toxic. People are like, why would you leave a dead organ in your body? And it's not really a dead organ. And you're not, if you do it right, you are actually creating an environment that allows your immune system to really keep that tooth in place. Okay. Hmm. So when you need a root canal, root, typically people either have a deep cavity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So bacteria gets in their tooth and that cultivates, it proliferates, it goes into the nerve and the nerve dies. This is essentially your oral microbiome getting out of whack. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, also it can happen if you crack your tooth, if you're stressed out, clencher, grinder, you crack your tooth and this, the tooth basically, um, the, that, that, crack becomes a doorway for bacteria to get in and kill the nerve. Okay. And so what the root canal does is it disinfects the tooth. It takes that disrupted oral microbiome and it cleans it out and it gets it back into a level that is restorative for, for that patient. Okay. So when a tooth gets infected and it's sitting there for too long, that bacteria goes down the root and then it starts to have an impact on the bone. And then that bone, bone hates bacteria. Bone will actually pull away from a tooth and show up on an x-ray as a black shadow. And I can share that with you in some visuals if you want. Um, it shows up as a black shadow. And that black shadow is a sign to the dentist that says, hey, there's something going on here. We need to evaluate this further. There's some actual disease going on. We clean it out. What the root canal does is once the bacteria is out, that bone now has the opportunity to heal and the bone regenerates. And it's really crazy because you can have some really big areas of bone loss and then you do the root canal and that bone regenerates and it comes back and there's no more problem in the bone. So not mm. only do root canals save your tooth, but they also regenerate your bone. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And then, um, okay. I'm coming from my not super educated stance here. So forgive me, but like, okay, we know that, you know, disrupted oral microbiome is linked to, you know, cardiovascular issues and all these other health issues when it's down in down in there like that, like, does that increase the likelihood of other health issues or no? So the studies that are published that are linking a lot of the, um, oral problems uh -huh. with systemic diseases like yeah. cardiovascular disease, even Alzheimer's, that's the studies are actually for periodontal disease, not endodontic disease. So I think there okay. needs to be some clarity because yeah. I do see a lot of people getting online and saying these things that, oh, mm -hmm. a root canal is linked to cardiovascular disease or to cancer. And that's actually not true. There's no studies that show that, but there are a lot of studies that link periodontal disease. So disease of the gum and the bone, which is different than a root canal infection. So I think there mm. definitely needs to be some widespread knowledge, like yeah. clarification that yeah. there's a difference. Mm. So when you need a root canal, can that lead to periodontal disease if left untreated or, you know, like for those of us who 
are yeah, so very <laughs> not they're, educated they're, on they're the definitely different different um mechanisms they're, okay okay um one is from the inside of the tooth and one is from the outside of the tooth now uh -huh. can the two eventually come and meet each other absolutely okay okay but usually the when there's a manifestation in the gum and the bone when you do the root canal not like you are healing that gum and the bone as well. You just get rid of the root canal problem and even the gum and the bone heal. Okay. Okay. So are, are there any other myths around like cardiovascular disease or can, you know, like, so there's, let's, there's just been no studies no, that, that prove like, that or correlate okay. that. Like there's, there's nothing out there. I think what people are doing are they're misinterpreting the data. They're actually not reading the study and not even reading the causes because bacteria like P. gingivalis, which is in our gingiva or our tissue, our gum tissue, that has been linked. When we have poor oral hygiene yeah. and we have periodontal disease, that's what's linked to the cardiovascular disease. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. And then, um, so myths around like flossing. Now I have like, I, I, I feel like I have to like take really good care of my teeth or I'll mm -hmm. totally get cavities, but I hear some people say, Oh, I never floss. And yeah. like, I don't ever have cavity. Can you kind of talk about flossing and maybe why some people I'm sure you've seen that. I don't know. I hear that from people yeah. all the time. Like I never floss some and I never don't. have cavities. Some yeah. people don't need to. Um, my husband is one of them. And he really, like, if I don't brush and floss every single day, twice a day, I can feel it on my teeth. He yeah. doesn't have the same problem. And that's because everybody's oral microbiome is different. Mm. Okay. And everything is going to be unique to you. So while you feel like you may get a lot of cavities, your bacteria, your microbiome may be more keratogenic. So you may have bacteria that causes decay where some mm -hmm. people, they can be covered in plaque and calculus and tartar. And then you take all that off and their teeth are pristine underneath. <laughs> they don't get decay, but maybe they're more prone to periodontal disease. So they have that type of microflora. Mm -hmm. Some people have both and some people have none. They're lucky. My mm -hmm. mom has never had a cavity, but every time I went to the dentist, I always had eight cavities. So I know what I'm prone mm -hmm. to and it's completely different. Mm. for every individual. Mm. Okay. And then I don't know if this is even in your arena, but like, are there certain, uh, micronutrient deficiencies? Is this in your arena of, you know, it, honest? a little bit. So just for clarification, like I'm a root canal specialist. So all I do right. is root canals. Root canals. I don't mm -hmm. see people like routinely. So I'm not really coaching right. people for that. My big mission is to like really debunk a lot of the myths around root canal therapy specifically mm -hmm. because people are so terrified. And again, I can show you some pictures that are kind of, they're, they're mind blowing. So, okay. Like, yeah, let's check them out. And so if you guys okay. are listening on audio, you can always come to YouTube. It's just coach, just search coach Terry Garrison. And that's it's slash coach Terry Garrison on youtube.com. Um, if you want to check these out, but maybe for those who aren't going to do that, if you could kind of explain the best that you can yeah. as we look at them. So I love to talk in tooth stories. I, I teach dentists a lot about this because one of the things that I think the world needs to know is that our education in dental school for root canals is not the best. <laughs> it's, it's, we kind of brush upon the, the topic and then we're allowed to do them. And I think that's a big reason why we have what I call the good root canal versus the bad root canal debate. And I'll show you an example of that, okay? So it's important for your audience and just people in general to know how to get a really good root canal that they don't have to redo in the future. But this is, um, this first uh, tooth story is a patient who had a big problem. So as a dentist, when we look at your x-rays, I'm gonna just go to this, we are looking for these, these findings. Okay. So what I'm pointing to right now, for those of you who are just listening, I'm pointing to an x-ray, a dental x-ray, and it shows a big black shadow around the tips of the root of about three teeth. Okay. And then nowadays we're using 3d technology. So we can see these teeth in so many different planes and directions. Okay. And it's a little bit more clear as to what we're looking at. So now I'm looking at a 3d image with that same black shadow. Okay. That dark shadow. And again, you can see it's encompassing one, two, and three teeth, right? So some dentists will be like, Oh, you need three root canals. 
but you want to make sure that they're doing proper testing because you'll see that this is all belonging just to one tooth, even though it looks like it's three. Mm, okay. okay. Now to a dentist, this picture is huge. So it's, and it's mind blowing. So what this next picture is, it's the same three teeth. Okay. One, two, and three. Okay. But now we're looking at the same three teeth in a cross section. So like a bird's eye view. And you can see all of this dark shadow is bone loss. This is where the patient has basically lost like almost half of their jaw underneath the skin. Now this patient didn't even have any pain, barely wow. had any pain. Yes. Okay. So these types of things can happen even when you don't have pain. Wow. So, so many things can happen in life <laughs> without having pain, right? Like some people mm -hmm. have not to be too morbid, but some people can have stage four cancer yeah. and not even realize it. Right. 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 So the same thing. And that's why going to your dentist for checkups is really important. We're not just trying to take your money. A lot of people think we're, you know, we're out to get you, but we're really trying to be preventative and catch things mm -hmm. early. Okay. So we have all this bone loss. That makes sense to you, right? Right. The dark shadow is the bone loss. So this is what bone does when there's bacteria somewhere. Okay. So I did a root canal on this one tooth. Okay. And then 11 months later, the patient came back and then I take more imaging to see the impact of that. And you can see, again, I didn't do three root canals. I just did one. Right. And all this bone is starting to come back. Now that was a pretty big area. So we're again, now we're almost a year into the future. We're looking at 3d images again, and we're looking back at that dark shadow. And now you'll see that the dark shadow is starting to disappear because bone is starting to regrow back into that space. This mm. person's actually growing back their maxilla. First, they didn't even realize that they were missing half of their maxilla. Second, now they're growing it and they don't feel that. Which, and this is the healing power that our bodies have that I feel like nobody knows about. Mm. So here we are. And something this big is gonna take a long time for the bone to regenerate because bone is really slow. So here we have all that bone loss. Almost one year later, you can see that bone trying to trickle back in. You, this is proper wound healing. This is what our bodies are able to do. Nice. There's, you know, that movie, The Octopus Teacher. Yeah. And you know, the octopus like lost his tentacle because the shark came and tore it off mm. and then he grows it back. Well, th this is what we do as humans. We're, we're able to heal and regenerate the same way. And two years. Okay. It's wow. a slow process, but two years. And I'd like to follow up my patients for a while. And you can just see this bone is coming back on the left side of the screen. Again, is the original, how we started picture with that big dark shadow. And on the right is the two year mark. And again, there's still some bone that is going to be filling in, but it's going to take some time. Something like this will properly like mature over probably four years or so. Okay. Wow. So we have to be patient. Yeah. Right. right. And here you see the progression. It's just getting better and better. And the bone is coming back in and more, more mature. Mm. Okay. What would Something. be the fate of this person if they hadn't had the root canal? Just they would have um, abscessed a bit. Um, got probably gotten swollen. Mm -hmm. More more bone loss. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm taking you to this next one, just so I'm not too redundant. But this is a cool one. Okay, so now this is a two another tooth story. So tooth story number two, even though it says number four here but they've already had a root canal. And this is the difference between a good root canal and a bad root canal, okay? So this patient's already had a root canal. Now, there are two cardinal rules of root canal therapy. You've got to find every canal and get to the end of every canal. Otherwise, what are you doing? You're leaving bacteria behind, mm -hmm. okay? And this is why root canals get a bad reputation because 50% um, of my practice is redoing cases like this. Wow. Okay. And that doesn't make people happy because they've spent money. And then mm -hmm. a few years later, they got to spend the same money again. Right? right. Okay. So here is this tooth. Um, again, this white material, I'm looking at a tooth that has white material in it, which indicates that there it's been previously treated with a root canal, but you can see that there's three different roots and you can see that the material doesn't quite go to the end of each root. Does that make sense? Yeah. You see that, right? Mm -hmm. 
And then when I look at the 3D image, again, in that bird's eye view, again, we're looking at that cross section, I can see that there was a canal found here, a canal found here, a canal found here, like you just saw in the previous, it was three canals, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this tooth, about 96% of the time has four canals. And you can see that there is a canal here, mm -hmm. but it was never treated. Mm -hmm. So the two cardinal rules of root canal therapy weren't followed. And so you, if you don't follow the two cardinal rules of finding every canal, getting to the end of every canal, it's not going to work. It's not that it does, it's toxic. It's that the rules weren't followed. Mm. So here's another, I just took this same 3D scan and now I flipped it. So now I can look at that one root that was missing that canal being treated. And you can see here's the one that was full. And then this is the one that wasn't treated. It's empty. It's got no filling material in it. And you can also see this is the sinus. This is the membrane of the sinus. And there's a little bit of bone loss here. So the sinus floor actually has been perforated. It's been eroded because of this dental infection. So you can have an impact on all these other structures in your mouth. And this patient probably can't breathe very well, mm -hmm. right? And that may impact their sleep, mm -hmm. right? So and here's another view. Um, again, you can see the sinus floor has been eroded, right? And then you have all this thickened mucosa here and this is all coming from a tooth wow so we redo the root canal you can see we went all the way to the tippy tip we took all that old filling material out we gave it a good disinfection and the technology these days is so much better now that we can really get in there and disinfect like we've never been able to disinfect before and again, we have to be patient. We can't wait one week, two weeks, even a month or two months. We have to give the body time to really heal well. And look, one year later, look at how the floor of that sinus has grown back. That's and look insane. at how that sinus has, that membrane has pretty much shrunk all the way to its normal resting position. Wow, that's incredible. And all that bone is just going back. We still have a little bit of healing to do, but that, that'll that happen over time. Wow. Yeah, I can see why you're getting the word out on this because yeah. especially this person is a great example because they're like, oh, I got a root canal and- Why should I get another one? It wasn't good. And they right. then they, ha they have probably, like you said, they probably likely are having breathing, sleeping problems. They don't even know what's related. They don't even exactly. know. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. Wow. Cool. Okay. So, okay. I guess the first question that comes to mind is like, how do you know how to find someone good? Like, how do you know what I mean? Is it yeah. just a gamble? Like what kind of questions do you ask or? Yeah, this is a great question. So number one, you have to ask yourself, like, are, are you, do you really value the work of a specialist? Okay, so mm -hmm. general dentists can do root canals and some of them can do them really well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, but then there's specialists there. I didn't even know when I was 17 that I could have seen an endodontist. Nobody told mm -hmm. me that that was a thing. So I think number one, having an awareness that there is a specialty that just deals with root canals. Like I do 10 root canals a day, mm -hmm. whereas a general dentist may do sprinkle in a few a week, right? Because their right. bread and butter is more crowns and veneers and stuff like that, which is something I don't do. You don't want me to do your crowns and veneers. You'll look pretty funky. <laughs> <laughs> But my specialty is, you know, just doing root canals. So, but even from endodontist to endodontist, they may work differently. They may have different technology. There is so much that we use. Um, I use a, a microscope, not just those little funny goggles that people wear. This is a microscope that comes off of my wall that mm. I do the entire root canal procedure with. And I, now I can see those teeny tiny canals because some of them are really hard to see. You may see them on your 3D scan, but it may be hard to find them inside the tooth. So having proper magnification is key. So a microscope is important. So you want to see that if, if I was getting a root canal, I would want my provider to have a microscope. I would also want them to have a 3D imaging machine. They, I would want them to have that technology, but not just have it really understand how to read it because there are some people who have it and don't know how to read it. And it's important that your provider be able to walk you through a scan, much like I just showed you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then nowadays when it comes to root canal therapy and it's, it's relatively new. So there's a lot of people who still don't have the technology. We use two additional um, 
pieces of tech. One is called the gentle wave, which is like a power wash for the tooth. Essentially, it uses sound waves to pump the disinfection solution through the tooth. So mm -hmm. it gets into those hard to reach places that people in the past have complained about. Oh, you can't get into all those places. You know, you're leaving bacteria behind. Now it's different between gentle wave technology and even laser technology during the root canal. It's a whole different ballgame now. It's what I call the modern day root canal. It's very different. And it's it's been different just within the last five years. Okay. Okay. So, so the sound wave technology would be something to look for if you want really exactly high quality root canal. Right. And also, you know, I feel like a lot of people don't want to pay for another consultation, but I think that's a great opportunity for you to see if that's the right provider for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so do your research, look at people's websites. What do, what do they have? Go and meet them, ask them questions, see how they're using their tech. Even some people who have the gentle wave, they use it. Sometimes you want somebody who's using it on every case, or that's their mission to use it on every case, mm -hmm. not just pick and choose. So those are the things that I've seen. I think that is the hardest part about being the patient is really finding the right person. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, you know, if you really value it, start with finding a specialist and then, you know, that kind of reduces the amount of people you need to interview or just research and then go from there because there's going to be several of them in your area. Right. And then mm -hmm. you can figure out which one fits your values the most. Does it typically, uh, is this the typical flow? Like it, since your regular dentist can do a root canal, I mm -hmm. assume the way it normally goes is if they think they can handle it, they're like, yeah, we'll just do a root canal. And then maybe if they feel like it's too complicated, they're like, uh, you might want to go see an endodontist because this is way yeah. that tricky. Can case. That can definitely happen. There are some people they are like, they already know their boundary. They're like, I don't do any root canals. I send everyone to the specialist. Uh -huh. So for those people, like, don't get upset about that either. Like, it's great that your dentist knows their boundaries, right? Yeah. Um, there are going to be some people who pick and choose. And there are going to be some patients who don't want to get to know another provider, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are going to be some people who bite off more than they can chew. And sometimes mm -hmm. they start it and then they have to refer it to us. And that's a lot more time, money, and energy on the patient. So mm. I think, you know, if you are a patient and you don't want any risk of that mid-treatment referral or, you know, you mm -hmm. just feel more comfortable, know that it's your option. It's your choice to see a specialist right from, from the start. Right. Like, even if your dentist says like, oh, I can just do it. Like right. maybe ask those questions that you just asked, like, right. Now that you've given them that kind of education, yeah. if they're like, oh no, I just do it. You just like, okay, well, I'm, yeah. I, I think I'm going to go see an endodontist. Like you have the right to you have <laughs> the right. And, and I would, you know, just be careful if like, it's not offered because it really should be offered as mm -hmm. an option. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. And then you are located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. And it's Ballantine, Ballantine endodontics. endodontics. Yeah. Endodontics. So you guys can, we'll link that, but you can, you know, always go straight yeah. to Dr. Chopra. If you'd like to, um, go to someone, you know, is good. Um, okay. Bioflow. Um, so root canal is this when you're saying bioflow, like I saw yeah. this in your materials, like, what do you mean by that? Like just the, the healing agents of the body or can you? Yeah. So I think a lot of people think, you know, Oh, what kind of supplement do I need to take? What kind of, you know, do I have to take calcium supplements to get this bone regeneration? They get kind of freaked out by their bone loss. And I right. say nothing, you know, there's really, you know, cause biohacking is such a thing and it's, mm -hmm. it's really hot to biohack, but mm -hmm. I, I came up with a new term called bioflow because you know, we do that one little intervention, but then we allow the body to be in flow right. and do what it's, it was built to do, which mm -hmm. is what you just saw with this bone regeneration and, and healing of like the sinus membrane. It all happens naturally. You literally mm -hmm. don't even have to do anything. You just mm -hmm. be yourself. And that stuff just happens automatically underneath. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just magic. Yeah. Yeah. The greatest quote unquote biohack I think you can do is get the problem out of the way. So the body can just do its thing, which is what in a nutshell, I'm hearing what a root canal can do for you. It's just getting yeah. an overgrowth of bacteria that's wreaking havoc out of the way. Yeah. So your body can just restore to homeostasis and rebuild and regenerate. Perfect. 
You got it. Awesome. You're a pro now. I love it. Yeah. I know all, <laughs> I, I know what an endodontist is now. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really though. Like, I mean, you know, I, 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 you know, I have a vague understanding of the oral microbiome and the gut, you know, obviously, cause I'm big on the, but it's very vague in terms of all of this stuff. So I really appreciate you coming on and taking the time to come and educate about root canals. Cause I mean, yeah, that's just not something I, that's not in my arena. So it's so wonderful to get that kind of education because now I know if, yeah. if I get thrown a, a root canal suggestion my way, I, I have some questions well, that I want to be asked. So thank you so much. Um, yeah. any other, um, you know, advice that you have for people out there that might be suffering with, you know, tooth pain or, you know, just any sort of pain. And the yeah. Dental, you, know? you know, usually when it's a root canal issue, your symptoms are either sensitivity to hot and cold or biting. Uh -huh. That's usually what triggers people to come see me. So if you are having like a, with like you drink some ice water and it hurts and it lasts for, you know, probably longer than 10, 15 seconds, that's typically a sign that you need a root canal. Okay. Um, another sign is when you have hot coffee and it really hurts, that's a sign that the nerve in the tooth is dying. And that's not a great sign. Sometimes when you have cold sensitivity, sometimes we can reverse it or we can prevent you from having a root canal. So I will say the quicker you can get in to get it checked out, the better, like I'm telling you, preventative dentistry can save people so much money, just mm -hmm. going and catching like a tiny cavity while they're small. Mm -hmm. is so economical. It's better mm -hmm. than even having dental insurance. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. you know, some people think, oh, I don't have dental insurance. Therefore I can't go to the dentist. It's actually cheaper to probably just pay for your cleanings and your checkups and not get the dental insurance. It's it really and is. There's, and there's some general dentists now that I, I had this in Utah and I was looking for it since I moved to Hawaii, but I couldn't find it, but I just paid him directly like a yeah, club membership. Like in-house like 30 yes. bucks a month or something. And yeah. then like my, they gave you credits if you come in every six months. So like right. everything ended up being covered, even my x-rays and all yeah. of that. And I think I paid like a hundred bucks once yeah. for a cavity, like a three sided, you know what I mean? So yeah. like that's available in a lot of areas. Yeah. So, you know, that, and just ask, you know, right. you may, you don't, you may not know until you ask. It's kind of like when people don't have insurance and they have a baby, you make a deal with the hospital. So like, I think right. it's worth just asking. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And you just get to have nicer teeth yeah. on top of it without exactly. all the costs. <laughs> like, it's just mm -hmm. like, it's just like taking care of your body in other ways, yeah. you know, besides your mouth, right. it's like, okay, well, you can be healthy and thriving or right. you can be like suffering and like not as right. feeling as great. And then it's really expensive, all these, you know, medical bills and all of that. Right. So yeah, preventative, but when it, if it happens, cause you said right. like, sometimes there's things like you grind your teeth, you know, right. stuff like or that. sometimes trauma, like as an endodontist, I right. see a lot of trauma and that can mm -hmm. happen at the worst time. And like, without warning, right. I feel like if people really focus more on prevention and really brushing and flossing the right way, going to the dentist, at least twice a year and just being preventative, I feel like my patient population should be limited to just trauma patients, right? Wow. Yeah. That, that's the reality, but people are scared of us. People don't trust us. They think it's going to be expensive, but, and so they avoid us. And that avoidance is what makes the things accumulate and become more expensive problems to fix. So it's really easy to not land in my chair unless you're, you know, in an accident, which I can actually talk about that because- um, this is a good little pointer for everyone, which I don't know why, like school nurses don't know this, why emergency rooms don't know this, but if you ever like trip and fall, which could happen to anyone at any time and you hit your face and your front tooth flies out, do you know what to do? I would go. Yeah. To and dentist. it's your front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> most, most people will probably panic first, right? Yeah. There's probably a little bit blood. So they're going to panic a little bit more. They're going to pick up the tooth, maybe run it under some water, maybe put it in a Ziploc bag. And then they go to the emergency room, mm -hmm. but you want to do something different. You actually <laughs> want to get that tooth back into the socket as quickly as possible. Okay. Because if you can do it in 30 to 60 minutes, and if you can think about it, by the time you get to the emergency room, it's probably an hour. And then they're going to make you wait because you're not having a stroke. It's right. faster for you to pick it up and put it back in, which again, I get it. Most people would freak out putting this tooth back in. 
they probably want to scrub it clean. You don't want to scrub it clean. Mm -hmm. You want to pick it up by the crown. So the white part that you see when you smile, do not touch it by the root. Pick it up by the crown. If you feel like it's dirty, don't rinse it with water. You can rinse it. You can just kind of take a, like a bowl of milk and just kind of mm. like rinse it with the milk. Don't scrape it. Don't nothing. And just try to get it back in. You could mm. even with FaceTime. Now I tell people, I'm like, patients need to FaceTime us from the crime of the scene, like the scene of the crime. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we need to get it in and then they can drive over and we'll get them in right away. Mm. So there's a lot of things you can do to get it in. But if you can get that tooth back into the socket in under one hour, your body will feel like it never left and it wow. will just reattach. Really? So, yes. Yes. And if you're too freaked out to do anything, put it in milk and go to your dentist and bypass the emergency room. But if you can get it, if you're strong enough to get it back in, get it back in, especially if it's an adult tooth. If it's a baby tooth on a child, a baby tooth, don't mm -hmm. worry about it. Don't yeah. worry about it. It's going to exfoliate anyway. But if it's an adult tooth, get it back in in under an hour and it will reattach and you'll be fine. You'll need a root canal because the nerve uh -huh. got severed, but uh -huh. it'll regenerate right back into its place. Wow. That's super good to know. Thank you for that. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, get over it. Like you just said, mm -hmm. like you could like completely save your tooth and it will reattach. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I think I can find the the courage to just stick it back in there. Yeah. And that's my last thing I was, I came up as you were saying this, um, the fear that people have of the dentist. I know this is like a real thing for people, like seriously, yeah. like yes. it's like public speaking level, like anxiety. <laughs> yeah. I don't personally possess that. I'm like, yeah, it might be a little uncomfortable, but yay. Like my mouth's going to be healthy. You know, like I don't, yeah, I might, yeah. If they're, if I have to get a cavity filled, it's, you know, it's slightly uncomfortable, right. but it's worth it. Right. Right. Do you have any, like, what is up with this? I don't understand why, <laughs> sorry, but I, <laughs> I don't understand why people are so terrified of like, I mean, some people work. have had like previous bad experiences. Okay. But again, that's, that's another opportunity to share that with a new provider. Like, tell us what happened. Okay. Because I, I don't want to repeat history. I don't want to do that again to somebody. So tell me what happened. And because everyone's different. Some patients want to know what you're doing. Some patients are like, I don't want to see anything you're doing. So like, tell okay. us what you want. And we're able to like adapt to you, right? And there's yeah. also like Valium that can take the edge off. There's um, Xanax people can take <laughs> just to take the edge off. So that, and also I'll tell you what's the best sedation ever is Netflix. If your dentist has a TV on the ceiling, that's great. Yeah. My patients yeah. love to just, you know, channel start, you know, just kind of binge watch while they're in my chair. And then, or sometimes they take a nap because they're on the Valium or they're just sleepy people. They just fall asleep everywhere. And, you know, plenty of people have slept in my chair. I think the key is adequate anesthesia. Rucanels are right. painless once you get numb. Obviously there's a little tenderness to get the anesthesia, but once you have really good anesthesia, you feel nothing during a root canal. Okay. So yeah, maybe people like there wasn't sufficient anesthesia and they had a really painful experience. Yeah. yeah that would yeah. make sense. <laughs> yeah. And okay. Yeah. I don't blame them for not wanting to right. come back because <laughs> it's not fun. Yeah. That would suck. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. We will link up your center, um, social media. What's your social media handle? Yeah. My handle is at Dr. Sonia Chopra. Okay, cool. We'll yeah. link that up or you guys can just go find it. Thank you so much for the information. This has been so illuminating for me. I had no idea on okay. any of this. So thank, thank you. you for thank taking you for having time. me. Thank you so much. <laughs>